What is good guys, Matt from Drality Gaming here giving you another video and this one is talking about the N64 Classic possibility. Now with the fact that the NES Classic Mini had come out last year and it retailed for about £60 and obviously that had its own little jazzy uh, set reselling after that and with the, in the light of the um, SNES Classic now coming out in September um, I thought it was a good time to actually discuss uh, the possibility of the N64 having its own kind of uh, homage, nostalgic like mini console like the other two have had. Now before uh, I go further into this video, we have to do we do have to discuss where does Nintendo draw the line. I actually think after the N64 they should draw the line. There shouldn't be a GameCube um, classic because there are still possibilities of remakes. Obviously, um, Miyamoto has actually said he was he doesn't want to do remakes, but go look at the two Zelda games. Uh, there are possibilities of um, uh, old Nintendo games actually getting remade. Uh, for like the new switch uh, well not the new switch is already out but I mean in terms of like GameCube and Wii and that that's still a possibility that can still come to the um, switch and the fact that it's kind of recent also it doesn't help um, but yeah talking about the N64 there are a lot of reasons this could happen um, we're gonna talk about the kind of games that can be on it uh, kind of issues that will be uh, that will face Nintendo I'm gonna talk about pricing of it I'm going to talk about reasons why it could actually be a thing and everything in between. Now the N64 was a bit of a divisive thing. A lot of developers didn't like it because of the cartridge size. Uh, also Nintendo was behind the curb in terms of um, Fortnite media because their competition was using CDs and Nintendo decided they didn't want people to pirate their shit. So they went to cartridges which as I said pissed off a lot of developers because you went from 76 megabytes on the PlayStation 1 to 8 on the N64. But I think there are, uh, there's a good place for the um, N64 Classic, and I'll, I'll go into it now. In terms of games, you do have games like Mario, the 64, Mario Kart, Mario Party, Mario Golf. Obviously, I'm not going to say this should just be a Mario machine, but you got that. you got Donkey Kong 64, which may be a slight issue because it was made by Rare, and Rare is now owned by Microsoft. But uh, I think I don't know how Nintendo will approach that. we got the um, Star Fox 64. Uh, I know that's gotten remade, and we will talk about that. Uh, the two Zelda games, uh, I know those got remade, but we we will discuss that. We've got F-Zero, and in terms of Zelda and F-Zero, there's some funky things we can talk about in terms of that. we got um, Pokemon Stadium 2, uh, because I believe that's the only one that actually came out in the West, or because uh, I think there were two Pokemon Stadiums in Japan. That is also a possibility, but it's not fully there, obviously, because I think you it was a fun game, but you really had to get the full experience by connecting up uh, different, uh, you have to connect the Game Boy, I believe. Uh, you got Wave Race 64, but there's a lot of the games, a lot of them had 64 next to them, um, if you didn't know already. Uh, we have Smash, that would be a good one. Uh, Kirby 64, and we'll talk about some maybes. We got Perfect Dark, which would actually have licen licensing issues. We got Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, again, licensing issues. GoldenEye, probably one of the most like famous and most well known N64 games, and one of the most popular. Still would have licensing issues because Rare own it, and um, I don't know. Like I think Nintendo had even um, said that there were licensing issues with the v uh, the eShop, but and the Virtual Console. We got Banjo Kazooie, and this is one from my co-host Mega Man 64. Um, and obviously, not to forget the greatest game on the N64, Superman 64. Uh, <laughs> anyway, reasons why this can happen. Uh, obviously you can have uh, big screen gameplay because uh, my co-host happily tried to point out the fact that uh, Zelda and Star Fox were actually and um, Mario 64 they've all been remade on the handhelds but those are on smaller screens so there is that possibility that you can have Manjura's Mask and Ocarina of Time and even Mario 64 in a HD format on your big screen TV which would always be nice obviously not everyone has a, um, a handheld and obviously, um, not everyone wants to sit like have, play on a handheld. Some people want to play on a bigger screen. Uh, another reason for this is the nostalgia factor. Obviously, a lot of people as a '90s console, a lot of people were either a bit young. If you go on Facebook and there's idiots that need to announce their '90s kids, I don't know why. Um, so you got the nostalgia factor. You give people an ax like people an easy access to um, play these games, and not actually, you know, in Nintendo's eyes, break the law. And I'll talk about why I had a bit of a snarky comment on that a bit later on in the video. But it gives people 
a better access to these games, especially when somebody's get like to actually collect the list that I've just suggested uh, would actually be quite expensive, and I've got that list as well. Um, it actually introduces a new generation, hopefully, into these really great games, and some of these games were considered or are considered some of the greatest games of all time, like Ocarina's, Ma uh, Ocarina's Mask, Ocarina of Time. Um, so that is a possibility, and obviously not every child will have a, a DS or a 3DS or a 2DS or some form of DS. Um, and also, if the parent wants to play it as well, you know, big screen, bigger picture, less strain on the eyes. And um, in terms of uh, virtual console sales, it probably would help the development of those. Um, now, a few issues that actually do come up with the N64 is obviously the price. Uh, I know a lot of people were complaining about the SNES Classic price. of uh, Well, I saw comments, really. Uh, people complain about it being £80. Uh, what I will say to you then is go try and collect those games, and I'm not counting count Star Fox 2 because that would be a hell of a mission to find that. Uh, you're breaking the bank. 80 quid is completely nothing compared to how much these cost. And almost is the same with the N64. With the N64 console ranging on eBay, these are eBay figures by the way, so take this with a big grain of salt because eBay is just notorious for shit pricing at times. You've got N64 consoles that are ranging from 50 to 60 pounds with only one con uh, controller. Mario Kart is ranging anywhere above 20 pounds. Same with Mario 64, same with uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, 15 pounds for Manjora's Mask, 20 to 30 pounds for Smash, and 9 pounds that I found for F-Zero, which actually comes to a total of 155 pounds, or 160, depend on uh, 65 pounds, depending on which console you get. And now that's not all the games I've listed for one, and two, um, that's not all unboxed. And any collector will tell you that obviously an unboxed cartridge does lose its value. So I think in terms of that, it actually, if you price this console at £100 and give games like Mario, or the Marios I mentioned, Donkey Kong, the Star Fox, the, uh, the Zeldas, the F-Zero, I think you're giving people a great way to play these games uh, that doesn't piss Nintendo off and it, at a better price than, than what they could have done. And obviously, it's a good way to um, bring these games into the modern era because if you wanted to play an N64 now, uh, most TVs now that are coming out probably will not support the um the oh shit what's it called the output media that the N64 had or a lot of less TVs have SCART now than they used to so yeah and obviously like the N the SNES Classic there are actually things Nintendo can do to actually make it a bit more of a reasonable buy now the N64 had a disc system no not a lot of people know this because it kind of was silent release it may have been popular in Japan but it was not popular anywhere else. It was kind of the era of weird add-ons. Sega did it first, but Nintendo did actually follow. And there were games that benefited from the N64's um, disk drive, like F-Zero. F-Zero, once you had the disk system, actually greatly expanded what you could do in that game. And I believe and feel that if Nintendo didn't remake or like made this N64 classic, they could actually add those features that people may not necessarily have used even back then because they may not have been exposed or they didn't want to pay for the um, the fucking, uh, what's it called, the disc system. So you give people a nostalgic experience, but you also build upon it. And that actually also goes for Zelda because Ocarina of Time is actually meant to be a disc system, but they did actually fit it on to um, the cartridge. So there is a possibility of that. And what would be nice, I'm not saying this is going to happen, no way in hell am I saying this is going to happen, but it would be nice if they actually somehow upgraded the textures in the games, especially the ones that had been remade, to make it look a little less ugly, but obviously that's kind of shitting on the nostalgia factor a little. But either way, <laughs> I believe that there is a possibility for that expansion of the CD drive. Uh, for the expansion of like people that have not necessarily played the games, because the N64 is regarded as having a lot of great games, but obviously it was overshadowed by the fact of the media and by the fact the PlayStation literally took a shit on it. The PlayStation 1 just took a shit on pretty much everyone during that time. Uh, tell me what you actually think of this, because with, with games such as Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time and Manjora's Mask, I know, again, remade, uh, Mario uh, Kart as well. Uh, hell, even Diddy Kong Racing, you know, expose people to that. Um, I believe there you give people a good margin, uh, like a good way of actually getting into this. Now, I know I'm kind of repeating the point, but I think it is a good idea, and in terms of price, I think they'd have to aim for about 100 to 120 pounds. I know that's getting a bit steep, and quickly to touch on controllers, because they are very, very divisive at the moment, in terms of um, how people feel about them, with the NES Classic having some short-ass like, cable, and obviously there was a lot of backlash to that, which led to... Um, 
the SNES Classic. Still having a bit of a short cable at 5 feet. That's still a bit short. Um, it would be nice if they included a wireless controller. Now, obviously, I know that that can actually vastly increase the price because of the R and like the research and development or whatever they need to do to achieve that. But I still think it would be a good idea if they actually had wireless control pads. Hell, even sell like multiple control pads with the console. Uh, if especially if you get GoldenEye because GoldenEye was a game that actually seriously suffered from um, performance issues especially when you're playing four players so to give people that nostalgia and not get a headache of nine frames per second I think would be a really good idea anyway tell me what you think tell me what you think of the um the disk drive add-on as well in terms of Nintendo adding that onto stuff like F-Zero to kind of give people the full experience of the game they may not have been able to um experience also remember F-Zero and uh, Diddy Kong Racing and um, Superman, <laughs> games like that, people may not necessarily have been exposed to, especially when those games haven't actually been, not Superman, uh, especially when stuff like F-Zero has not been released in a very long time. So I believe it gives people that nostalgia. Also, if you were planning to get bring an F-Zero game to the Switch, is a good way of like getting people into it if, in the hope of you know people uh, actually buying it and playing it, and hopefully it being in stock. Uh, that's the other thing. Uh, before I end this video is that Nintendo really 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 need to work on their stock issues and uh, develop and development issues of these consoles because the NES classic was in short supply uh, SNES classic is actually being like kind of figured to be in short supply the switch is having supply and demand issues so hopefully Nintendo can sort everything out in terms of that but tell me what you think tell me what you think should be the pricing tell me what games you would want on this N64 Classic. Hell, it may be games I've not mentioned, you know, or maybe Superman 64 is your favorite game and you only want that and nothing else, I don't know. Uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Uh, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, it really doesn't matter to me. I like it when people dislike it because you know, I know I've annoyed someone somewhere and that kind of makes me feel good about myself that I can make someone angry off a YouTube video. Uh, but yeah, like the video or dislike it. Um, subscribe to the channel, it really does help me and Doris out and obviously there's lots of great content such as Doris' Street Fighter or his Ratchet and Clank or if you just want to hear me swear and get angry at people, that is all perfectly fine. But yeah, leave a comment, tell me what you think, subscribe to the channel and ultimately guys, as I always said and say, have a nice day.